So warm welcome to all of you and thanks for joining our third buy-in webinar on the domain of buy-in business partner party. We will hear more about this, um, the two sort of names, this renaming later. Um, many thanks also for those uh, that are registered from, uh, let's say, more um, countries like Latin America, US, Canada, Iceland I can see on the screen. So we had uh, registrations also for the webinars from South Africa, from Indonesia. So there should be a couple of uh, additional participants joining. So uh, today, it's my great pleasure to facilitate this session. My name is Karen Fischenbeck, and I'm Secretary General of Bayern. Before we start our um, session and get some insights into this topic, let me briefly mention a couple of housekeeping notes. The webinar, as you can see, will be recorded, and this is uh, to give and make the recording available on the Bayern website, bayern.org. For those uh, who were unable to attend and are interested in reviewing the session, um, so all the participants will be muted during the uh, session, uh, but there is uh, still the opportunity, and I'd like to encourage you to use the chat functionality if you have any immediate questions, so we will have an eye on that and uh, see whether there are any questions arising during our presentation. There will be, at the end of this session, there will be a uh, comprehensive Q&A, so you will be able to ask our presenter direct questions or find out more about Bayern um, if you are interested in uh, getting more information about our community. And I would like to introduce you to Jörg Widerstrom, and uh, we'll hear more from him in a couple of minutes. Jörg is the head or the chairman of the Bayern Working Group uh, Business Partner Party. And uh, as um, we heard during our previous webinar, uh, Credit Suisse Klaus Hagen mentioned that uh, the topic of business partner party domain is very important for Credit Suisse. And uh, this is also the reason for his lead architect uh, to be actively involved in this working group. So today we will be hearing more about uh, this topic directly from Jörg Widerspohn as the chairman of the group. Jörg is a Senior Development Architect, Financial Services uh, with the buy-in partner SAP, and he will be able to uh, share with you insights into how SAP has adopted um, and leveraged the buy-in thinking and, thinking and deliverables in this um, domain and uh, across, so not only this domain, but also um, across different domains. So uh, you will hear more about this in a couple of minutes. Just uh, for those of you who joined uh, today for the first time, I would like to give you a short introduction into Bayern, what is Bayern, what is Bayern's overall goal. And then we will move to the business partner party domain and have a focus on this. And at the end, you will learn more about the benefits uh, from this community um, that uh, are there for banks and partners. And uh, the question is also where to find more information, so there will be additional information for you at the end of the session. Let's start with a quick Bayern introduction. As some of you may be aware, Bayern was founded in 2008 as an independent association, the Banking Industry Architecture Network. It is a not-for-profit organization, and the overall goal is really to reduce integration costs. So most of you are aware that uh, banks, and you can see a couple of logos uh, of Bayern member banks on the right-hand side, have uh, embarked on a, on a journey. Um, this is the transformation of core banking systems. And in this context, they uh, really have a hard time integrating different uh, solutions, uh, not only from different vendors, but also uh, uh, integrating in-house development uh, with uh, package solutions and so on. So uh, what uh, the overall goal is, is really to reduce this complexity, number one, and also to reduce the integration costs. So basically, in a couple of uh, years, there should be packages available on the market that are really aligned to this emerging standard and uh, are able to uh, be integrated quick, quicker than uh, currently. So this is why the banks are driving this. So you can see the active... Uh, members on the right-hand side, 
along with the software vendors and the service providers that uh, give guidance to the banks um, during their projects. This also has a history, so uh, some of you may be aware that um, about uh, five, four or five years ago, um, this initiative was uh, started as an initiative by SAP, so I'm happy to have uh, Jörg with us. At that time, it was uh, an initiative with SAP and leading banks, and uh, slowly but surely it was expanded to other partners, and uh, as I said in 2008, it was decided to make this um, association independent, to really make sure that we come up with, a, with an in independent and open um, standard in the banking space that really supports the banks and is driven by the banks and their partners. So just to refer to last to the previous um, session, as I mentioned, this is an extract of Klaus Hagen's presentation. So Credit Suisse is very uh, interested and very active in the um, business partner party domain. And this is also why Jörg Widerspohn and uh, Matthias Berg are working together in this group, uh, leading this group. Um, to make sure that this is uh, adequately covered. And I think that's a very important uh, aspect also for banks, not only with regard to the increased uh, regulation in that respect, covering the, uh, the business partner or the clients, and I think that's a really important topic for the moment. So I would like to hand over to Jörg to give us some more insights into the adoption um, of these uh, deliverables and buy-in thinking from a partner view this time, not a bank view. Last time we had Credit Suisse, this time we've got SAP. So over to you, Jörg. Uh, thank you, Karin. Uh, hello and welcome also from my side. Uh, as Karin mentioned, my name is Jörg Widerspohn and I work at SAP as Senior Development Architect for Master Data Management in the area of financial services. Among other responsibilities, I'm responsible for the architecture and design of the SAP Customer Information Management Solution for, bank, for banks. And at the same time, Karin mentioned this also already, I'm the uh, chairman of the uh, Buy-in Working Group Business Partner. And in this role, I work really close and, and uh, in a good cooperation with with my colleague from uh, Credit Suisse, with uh, Matthias Berch, who is the uh, vice chairman of our working group. Okay, so what is it that I'm going to uh, talk about today? I will talk about the adoption of buy-in thinking and deliverables as part of the SAP for Banking Solution Portfolio in the business partner domain. And I will do this in a way that I first briefly talk about SAP as a company, where do we stand t today, and uh, what is uh, about uh, our industry expertise and our products and services. I will then go a little bit deeper into the uh, SAP for banking solution portfolio but I will uh, quickly focus on the uh, customer information management solution um, I'm responsible for from an architectural point of view. Um, then in, uh, in the uh, third part of my presentation, I will talk about the uh, buy-in thinking and the deliverables in the uh, business partner domain, and I will talk about how SAP adopts these deliverables, and I will present three examples uh, how we do this. Okay, uh, let's start. And SAP today, uh, SAP, as you might know, has been founded in 1972 by five men who worked for IBM Germany before, and they had a certain business idea uh, the idea was to build real-time software applications that can be used for all kinds of companies and industries. Uh, today, SAP is market leader in this segment and the best business application company in the world. The SAP Group has more than 100,000 customers in uh, 
120 countries uh, covering 25 industries and there are more than 50,000 employees working worldwide together with uh, more than 1,200 service partners to provide our products and services to our customers. These are some numbers and when it comes to industry expertise, uh, SAP gained industry expertise over the last 35 years uh, in, in different areas by working closely together with, uh, with customers and partners as mentioned and this work gave us deep insight into the uh, environment that companies are in and uh, into their specific requirements in their market, in their industry. Uh, when it comes to banking, the uh, industry expertise I mentioned before is uh, well recognized by uh, some of the analysts. So SAP is seen in regards to the uh, banking area, to the uh, core banking area as a leader by, by Gartner. Uh, this survey has, has been published uh, September 2010, so it's, uh, it's uh, quite actual, quite current. Um, SAP seen as leader, also in the upper right corner seen by Obum, and here we, uh, we are uh, ahead of Infosys uh, when it comes to the functionality, and uh, we are very close the leader in when it comes to technology uh, on the other dimension. So this is uh, part of the uh, SAP story to be the leader in the uh, in, in industries and a certain uh, uh, market segments. But what is also interesting, and I would like to mention this here as well, uh, there are some other. Uh, software vendors in the upper right corner and I see uh, some of the buy-in members here. So, so it seems to be leading the pack means also to, uh, to work together re uh, in, uh, in regards to standards, to, to go for standards, uh, to, uh, to improve the overall uh, quality of, of, of products by standardized interfaces and services. It seems to be uh, something that leading companies uh, have well recognized and, and work on. Okay, uh, when we look into the uh, customers SAP uh, uh, serves in the uh, banking industry, we see that uh, most of the uh, Banking customers use our SAP Enterprise Resource Planning uh, solution. We see here more than 1,000 customers and we see some prominent names uh, of companies mentioned here. And we also see that uh, some of them use uh, intensively our, our sub-business objects products and also our technology uh, platform, the uh, sub uh, NetViva SAP uh, NetViva technology platform. When it comes to uh, specific banking applications that go beyond the SAP Enterprise Resource Planning solution, then we also see here significant numbers and and uh, names, uh, uh, well-known names. Uh, we see here for integrated finance and risk management solutions, we see more than 120 customers. Core banking, as mentioned before, more, uh, more than 130 customers. And when it comes to uh, sales and service and marketing uh, solutions for banking, we also see here a growing number. And looking at these uh, customers and uh, the areas where they use our software uh, brings us directly to the uh, SAP for banking solution portfolio 
And here you can see a very high level overview. Um, you see the uh, sales and service and marketing solutions mentioned here. And on the slide, you also can see the uh, transactional banking solutions, uh, for example, the uh, deposit management solution, the uh, loans management solution, the uh, payment processing that we offer uh, here in the middle, and you see the uh, finance and risk uh, products and solutions that we, we offer uh, in the analytical area. Um, what is also uh, worth to mention is that our banking specific solutions that they use the same technology platform, the SAP NetWeaver platform, and that they use the same integration infrastructure as our uh, resource planning uh, solution that uh, is available for years now. When we now look at the uh, customer information management solution, it is mentioned here, this is an essential part of our portfolio and we, uh, we uh, should look or we, we could look uh, deeper into this. Uh, on the next slide, you see that our customer information management solution for banks, that this solution is based on the SAP business partner component. Uh, this component, the central parts of it and uh, all the concepts of it are used by all SAP business applications. All SAP business applications that need customer data in their business processes, for example. But the uh, business partner uh, component uh, fulfills uh, different requirements. It allows not only to maintain customer data that are needed in business processes, but uh, it also allows to maintain data of other external parties that are involved into business processes like suppliers, employees, or any partners, agencies, whatever. And uh, this is done in a way that these data are maintained and stored only once in a system. So uh, it's a central component, it's a master data component, and we achieve this, for example, uh, among other uh, architectural concepts, we achieve this by the uh, business partner role concept, where one business partner can play different roles um, and, and this gives, gives a lot of flexibility. We also have a lot of flexibility when it comes to uh, maintain business partner to business partner relationships. And in general, uh, we have functions and features that customers can enhance our SAP business partner component and can configure the business partner component to their specific needs. Especially when, when it comes to uh, integration uh, into an existing uh, uh, system landscape, uh, our predefined interfaces and services are uh, important and uh, are used in different deployment scenarios. Okay, uh, having, uh, or I, I gave you a, background information about SAP and the uh, SAP products and especially about the uh, SAP for banking uh, solution portfolio. And now I would uh, present you three examples where we at SAP adopt buy-in thinking and deliverables in the area of business partner. Uh, the first example that I would like to uh, present is a, is a general one. Uh, Bayern is an association of banks, software vendors, and service providers 
with the goal to define service standards for the banking industry, as Karin mentioned already. Uh, one of its major assets is the uh, so-called buy-in service landscape that you can see here on the left side. So, so this is the uh, buy-in service landscape and you see here the uh, version 1.5 that will be published shortly. And uh, this service landscape presents an ordered collection of service domains and associated standard services covering banking activities. And on the other hand, SAP maintains a so-called business domain catalog that is based on the uh, buy and le uh, service landscape and directly derived from, from this landscape. And the SAP domain catalog uh, provides, for example, the uh, business or shows, shows uh, the uh, SAP solutions for bank what are uh, what functions and what features are available and how do they fit into the overall uh, buy-in schema. So the uh, business domain catalog from SAP di directly derived from the uh, buy-in service uh, uh, landscape. Uh, for example, when it comes to the, uh, the business partner domain uh, on the uh, buy-in side, we have um, certain business objects already uh, uh, identified there. So the SAP business partner and the SAP business partner to business partner relationship objects, they fit very well to, to this um, uh, buy-in schema. The second example is on a more detailed level, and we look deeper into the uh, uh, business partner domain, and here we see uh, how the buy-in service landscape evolved from version 1.0 to 1.5. Uh, with 1.5, we now have a buy-in service landscape that really covers a broad view and covers the full range of, of banking activities. And uh, as a, during this process, during uh, the uh, process of defining version 1.5, the uh, existing domains have been reviewed and uh, discussed again. And there were two things that uh, uh, we discussed uh, re in the business partner domain and where we uh, were directly affected. So one discussion was whether the uh, already um, identified business objects, whether they are still uh, valid, and the result was that the uh, business partner and business partner relationships that, they, uh, that have been defined, that they remain on the same level of abstraction and uh, within the buy-in landscape, and this was also a confirmation of the SAP uh, flexible concepts uh, in regards to our business partner component. And then the second aspect, and this is more important here to mention, is that we renamed uh, the business partner domain uh, within Bayern. And the reason for that was that we want to be able to better align with other standards organizations. So the, the party is a, a well-known and recognized term in uh, other standards organizations, and we renamed our business partner domain to uh, party. So the uh, business domain now is called party, and we now have defined two service domains one is called party data management, and one is called party profile. And this, this has been an important step 
And I mentioned already the reason why we did this, because um, this step opens the door for further alignment with other standards organization. And this brings me to the uh, third example. Uh, by an, as a standards organization, uh, is the first one that focus on implementation independent definitions of services. And BIN is also the first standards body that focus on A to A scenarios. Um, other standards organization, they, they used to work uh, on a lower level and focusing on B to B communication. Uh, so, so here we, we have a we have a, um, a certain position uh, when we define independent semantic uh, service uh, services, um, and this is a new position we uh, we have here. But it, at the same time, it is uh, a Bayern's policy to align and to contribute to service uh, standards when there is already something uh, that has been defined and exists. So we do not want to com uh, develop competing standards. Um, and uh, as one of the first results of this approach uh, to align with existing standards, uh, we already found out that Bayern and IFX and the OMG Finance Domain Task Force, that they together recognize the ISO 222 and the uh, uh, um, the repository that SWIFT ad administered, administered for uh, ISO, uh, that these are the core mm -hmm. uh, um, parts uh, for, for industry alignment. And uh, SAP supports this alignment work uh, that Bayern started. We do this uh, directly, also on a very detailed level on a working level. So, for example, we participate in the alignment of, uh, of uh, the meta models, the uh, buy-in meta model, how it fits to the ISO 222 meta model, so the meta model that buy-in uses to define services. So here we, we are actively involved, one example, and again in the uh, buy-in party domain that uh, was called earlier business partner. Uh, here we also uh, are actively involved and here we uh, started already uh, further alignment work that goes deeper, that goes on to a more detailed level. So we are really looking for, for an alignment on, on a structure level and on the level of attributes. And this is ongoing work, and uh, this is a lot of work ahead of us, but, but uh, we at SAP, we believe uh, in this work, and we uh, think it, it makes sense to, to, to uh, get this kind of alignment uh, for the uh, banking industry. Okay, so uh, this has been our, uh, my uh, third example, and uh, I now come to the end of my, uh, to the end of my presentation, uh, and I would like to summarize what I said. Uh, SAP is the leading business application software company worldwide with uh, 35 years of industry expertise. The uh, customer information management solution based on the SAP business partner component is an essential piece of our solution portfolio for banks. And the examples that I uh, presented show how SAP has adopted buy and thinking and deliverables in the business partner domain. And I mentioned the uh, SAP domain catalog that is uh, based on the uh, buy and service landscape. I also mentioned the SAP business objects and services that we defined in our business partner domain, the business partner itself, and the business partner to business partner relationships. 
And I mentioned as a third example the uh, active support and the uh, work on the ISO 222 alignment in the business partner domain that is now called party domain within Bayern. So uh, with this, these statements, I, I would like to, to finish my presentation. And uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, I hand over back to Karin. Thank you very much, Jörg. I think that was very interesting also to see uh, this perspective of the business partner slash party from a buy-in, let's say, member, partner that is a buy-in member. And I think it was also interesting to see the usage of the buy-in assets on different levels, as you uh, mentioned before. So on high level, the domain catalog, uh, but also uh, the more detailed uh, view. So I think that was uh, interesting insight. So thank you very much, Jörg. Now, before we open up the uh, question and answer session, I would like to give you some uh, opportunity to think about your question. I'm sure you still have a couple of uh, questions either to Jörg or with regard to Bayern. So let me quickly um, have a look at the benefits that uh, the Bayern members mention. You can see the logos um, on the side. So as I mentioned before, reducing integration costs and uh, minimizing IT risk, I think that is a very prominent uh, point. And uh, especially our, uh, also ING Bank um, is really uh, looking at that. Uh, so integration costs is really a, a major um, driver and that can make or break a business case. Um, so that is one uh, top priority. And also, of course, uh, interoperable banking architectures, uh, which is important uh, when you think about uh, combining solutions from different vendors. So we've had one example today, but of course, there are other partners within Bayern that also have solution portfolios for banking, but also non-members. So um, as soon as there is an emerging standard and a standard that is being adopted broadly, uh, this is becoming reality. Then, of course, what the buy-in members uh, mention is uh, sharing experiences, for instance, with uh, other banks and with partners. So uh, during the physical meetings we have in uh, buy-in, there uh, are uh, close to 50 participants uh, that are, have the opportunity to really uh, meet in person, to share updates, and uh, share also um, experiences and case studies from um, their own banks and uh, organizations. And of course, it's an opportunity to learn more about business architecture topics like a benchmark and a, um, a sanity check for your own pr um, projects. And as we've uh, already heard, uh, being part of this community, shaping an emerging industry standard is very important, um, especially for the partners, of course, but also for the banks that would like to um, sort of push uh, the partners and uh, influence the future deliverables in the future portfolios, so being part of it and being able to influence is also one of the major advantages of being a member. So now the question, uh, if you would like to know more about Bayern, uh, you're invited to visit our home page, uh, page uh, outlined here, Bayern.org. We would also be happy to in arrange an individual follow-up session, and a couple of uh, participants have already leveraged this uh, opportunity. So this is always good to um, ask your individual questions and uh, discuss um, the approach for your own organization. Of course, Bayern will also be present at uh, upcoming events that you can see here. For instance, San Francisco Semantic Technology Conference for those of you who are in the US or in Canada. Cybers, of course, in September, which is a major opportunity to meet with our members, and also the member-hosted events that uh, you will be able to visit uh, worldwide. Then uh, I would also like to, to take this opportunity to announce the next uh, webinar taking place June 29. This will be uh, focusing on lending services. So today we had the domain of business partner party. Um, it's about standardization of lending services uh, called a peak insight. And uh, Anjali Jonkelkar from Fernbach will share with us uh, how integration uh, is simplified and technology costs are reduced by using standardization. And uh, if you would like to uh, um, join these webinars, you've already done so. If you'd like to share this with your colleagues, feel free to do so. Or if you missed any of the webinars, there are recordings available. And you can see the link here below. 
Uh, Jörg also mentioned the next deliverables, uh, the buying service landscape 1.5, and uh, this will come with a how-to guide to show the usage of the service landscape and the meta model. This will be published shortly, so uh, the buying members will be able to have a preview of this um, and jointly discuss the next version um, beginning of June, and the publication will be um, sometime in July. So as soon as this has been published, there will be more information on the next uh, version of the service landscape. Then, uh, last but not least, if you have any other questions other than uh, um, here at the webinar, uh, please feel free to drop me a note. I'd be happy to get back to you and uh, answer them offline. But now you will have the opportunity, as Jörg is still on the call, uh, to ask your questions. And I know it's uh, difficult and a challenge for, for people to ask, but I think uh, we can have uh, volunteers. So I think the, the uh, uh, first one will pave the way for the next to follow. So is there anybody who would like to ask a question directly to Jörg? Yeah, Rita speaking. Karen, can you hear me? Yes, I can. we can hear you. OK, good. Jörg, you mentioned, I think, on page 14 it was, uh, the name change from buying from a business partner just to party. Is this just a naming thing, or do ISO 2022 or IFX, do they have a different understanding of party than SAP has for a business partner? Can you explain that, please? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, uh, I mentioned briefly uh, that we renamed uh, uh, the uh, domain, but I did not uh, mention uh, some of the important details here. So um, ISO, ISO uh, 222, they, they, they maintain a so-called business model where they define their uh, business components. And there is a new version upcoming uh, where they redefined their party business component. So, uh, ISO has a, a business component that is called party, and the upcoming version has also this kind of role concept that we uh, have uh, with the business partner. So they also have uh, the party uh, playing different roles. So there is a good um, correlation with, that we have to further investigate uh, when it comes to, uh, to an SAP point of view. But for buy-in, uh, as we said, we, we, uh, we saw that there is a good fit in regards to the, this business uh, component as an, as an object called party on our, uh, and that we called on the buy-in side before a business partner. And uh, now we have to, to look deeper into this. As I said, we have to look uh, into the structure, how ISO structured the, uh, uh, the new uh, party that they um, uh, roll out with the next version, and what are the attributes that they see. Um, interesting here is they, uh, they focus today uh, mainly on, on attributes and on, on data segments they need for yeah, payment uh, orders, for payment processing. So uh, they, we did not see a uh, additional um, objects or business components, uh, but this is different with IFX. So here we found um, a good correlation. They define objects like party, and they also define a party to party relationship as an object. So, so it's also already on the level of of, of objects where we have a good correlation. And as I said, now we have to look in, uh, deeper into this, and this. These were the, uh, uh, the, the reasons on a detailed level why we renamed uh, our domain, because now we, the door is open and we, we can talk uh, uh, about more details and can we, we can further align. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Reto, that was, that was a good question. Yes, so thank thanks for much. asking that. And uh, Jörg, thanks for the additional explanation. And I think that's an, a good example with regard to alignment um, to different standards organizations. And maybe we can mention, and this has been mentioned before, uh, we've got a standardization working group with three streams. One of them is ISO 20022. 
Then uh, the other one is IFX Forum. So there's a group working um, on the IFX Forum together with Bayern. And the third group and the third stream in the standardization group is uh, the collaboration that is planned uh, with Open Group with regard to TOGAF, a, that, which is a, a framework that is also used in banking. So we felt it would be a good idea to align with the, these three um, associations and these three standards organizations up front. So thanks very much for this first question. Any other questions with regard to buy-in overall or the topic of business part and party that uh, we've just uh, discussed? Okay. So this doesn't seem to be the case. If uh, your phone is still muted, feel free to use the chat panel or get back to us uh, after the session if you have any individual uh, questions. So thank you very much for your interest in Bayern and for joining our session today. So I look forward to meeting uh, a lot of you at the upcoming session. And we will let you know as soon as the Service Landscape 1.5 deliverables um, have been published. There will be another uh, webinar and also different uh, perspectives from the different members uh, of the adoption of the Service Landscape. So have a great rest of the day and look forward to hearing you again in the near future. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, Karen. Bye.